So today I have a quick astrological update on the price of Bitcoin and Ethereum. I mostly want to talk about Ethereum today, but Bitcoin is important to look at because it dictates the movement of all the other altcoins in the crypto space. So if we know the direction that Bitcoin is moving, then we know as well whether it's a good time to invest into altcoins like Ethereum. And, you know, whenever Bitcoin increases, the altcoins tend to follow and they tend to go to a greater extent. And when Bitcoin is decreasing, the altcoins decrease as well, but to a greater extent. So Bitcoin is a more stable of the cryptocurrencies, likely because it has the largest market cap. But in the last update, how we left off is with this bullish W pattern and the fact that we were approaching a new moon, which was in Virgo. So if we look vaguely at the shape of this, um, we see that a W pattern was forming in the chart. So let me go ahead and remove the drawings very quickly. And I'll mark out, you know, the the different peaks. So there's right here is the neckline. And where we left off last time is um, before the new moon, which is seen by this black dot right here. And what I explained is that with a W pattern, once you break break the neckline, the expected movement for a trade is from the swing lows to the neckline, and you add that to the neckline, which is seen also by this dashed orange li orange line. That's the price, which was around twenty one thousand eight hundred, as you guys can tell. Um, but if we added this line, what we see is that they this takes us about to the twenty three thousand level. That was my projected move for Bitcoin if the W pattern played out. And what we see is that we never really held the neckline. We never really broke above it. So this pattern became invalidated. Had we crossed, you know, the orange line, I believe that we would definitely have went to the 702 at least. And that would have gotten us perhaps a $1,900 Ethereum. Now, anyways, what we see on the new moon, which I always... Um, tend to look for when selling and de-risking and taking some profits we see that sure enough you know the peak was right around the new moon which you can see on the bottom of the screen was august 27th and after that we had a sharp decline of how much uh, i think i need to prepare these statistics before the video that way it's more it's more concise but we had a 10% decline in the price of Bitcoin. Now, I sold at the new moon. I sold like all my um, Ethereum. And after this decline, I, I ended up de-risking a lot of my altcoins as well. Because what we're going to talk about next is Bitcoin's predictions for, for the future based on the astrology. Because Bitcoin recently had its lunar return which happens approximately once a month and it shows the upcoming themes of a person or a cryptocurrency in this case based on their chart and we've done lunar returns before and had it be very accurate and helpful for predicting value and and price movement um the thing with price though is that it's hard to pinpoint exact price just using astrology so i like to look at the astrology to tell the general direction of things and then i look at the charts and the technical shapes and the analysis to see the technical price targets so um what i'm seeing though is that the direction is generally bearish at this time and this lunar return for Bitcoin, which is happening on the 11th of September, which means Bitcoin will enter a new cycle at that time. It has the ascendant in Capricorn. Capricorn is a malefic and it's about limitations, restrictions and tradition. It's about things being realistic or pessimistic. And furthermore, we have Pluto, the planet of destruction and debt on the ascendant. So... 
Bitcoin may suffer a lot of liquidation at that time. Because what we know is that people like to leverage Bitcoin and they like to trade on leverage. And what will happen is that once Bitcoin falls below a certain price, their position is going to get automatically sold by the exchange. And this is what creates those sharp candles like what we saw recently in August, in the middle of August. We saw a, a huge 13% decline all of a sudden because as if this is the peak, as one as one uh, decline happens, a lot of people's positions get like get liquidated and then another one happens and it gets liquidated until we go back to the point where people were not, you know, being optimistic, you know, and that's what creates like a negative 13 percent decline at times. And this is with, you know, le leverage, which is a fairly new phenomenon in crypto. But anyway, um, with Capricorn being on the ascendant, Saturn being in the second house, the second house is about money or finance or worth. Saturn is about restrictions, limitations or slowdowns. Astrologically speaking, Bitcoin is not looking like it's going through a good cycle in September. And historically speaking, September is a less bullish, bullish month for cryptocurrencies. I'll have to pull up the chart for that. Um, that shows the average price change during the different months over the past 13 years or I believe 11 years of Bitcoin's price history. And you'll see that September is typically a decline. And also this astrology is confirming it. Now, this return is happening on the 11th of September, which is 9-11. That's a very like special date uh, in the occult or like in, in numerology, which is another thing I like to use to predict the markets. But um, that is when we definitely should see a turnaround. Um, and I, I project more bearish energy. And for us to decline further, perhaps touching this 236. Now, for now, um, what we see with the Fibonacci levels, which I use the trading range from August to the low to the swing lows of June. Um, we're about at the three three eight two level, the thirty eight percent level. This is a Fibonacci number, and Traders just use this, these levels as support and resistance. And we see that we're just swinging around on this level. Traders don't know if they want it, want the price to keep going up, if they want to keep buying, or if they want to sell before a decline. Um, I'm on the side that we should expect a decline, you know, fairly soon. But, um, yeah, no, no, like, based on the astrology, the bears have the the astrological advantage at that time the energy will be more fearful pessimistic and restrictive around bitcoin especially the value of it um, and saturn is also squared to uranus the planet of technology which is currently in the sign of finances is currently in taurus which is showing why there's so much emphasis on financial revolution and it's showing why an astrologer like myself is making content on cryptocurrencies Uranus is about change and revolution, and it's in the sign of finances, and it's conjunct to the North Node. So people like you and I that are, you know, into this stuff and dabbling with it, we are very on 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 the right timeline, and we're very ahead of the, the crowd, and we're going to benefit financially. And I've been into crypto since 2017, which is when I first invested into it. But with that being said, though... Uh, you know, there's a lot to talk about, uh, but I guess I'll save, you know, the macro analysis for, for a future update. We're going to look at Ethereum next. And let me get rid of this extra Fibonacci level. But um, what we can see with Ethereum, if I recolor this trend line, make it white so it's more clear. Hold on, let me undo that one. Trying to select the dotted line and make it white. Um, what we see is we saw the W play out for Ethereum. And what I was projecting for Ethereum was us reaching this trend line 
at about 1750 and the last video we were at this w right here um we ended up reaching instead 1724 so that's pretty close to my prediction um again it's hard for me to state exact price or predict the exact price in fact it's pretty much like impossible for me to know what it's going to be but i could just use you know technical levels and trend lines and i felt as though 750 was a good price to sell and even 1700 was a good price uh and on patreon i put 1700 and uh, as you know a, a a reasonable level to expect next and so sure enough we broke this w because Ethereum is a little bit more bullish than Bitcoin at the same time. And, and this W was happening at the same time of Bitcoin's W, by the way. And we see it's a lot more clean with Ethereum. And the moves are, are larger and more defined. And it's like I was saying, whenever Bitcoin makes a move, the altcoins follow as well. But they tend to be more great in their movement. Especially Ethereum at this time is very bullish. And this is the coin that I'm currently trading. Um swing trading and whatnot but anyways we we saw we hit 1720 and then we began to fall and we're making we were making this uh downwards wedge this wedge pattern and these patterns are really great for predicting uh, market reversals or trend reversals a downward wedge as it reaches the bottom signals a um, a reversal towards the upside. The reason why is because when the lows are decreasing, this is showing a uh, increase in supply. When the highs are decreasing, this is showing a decrease in demand. And anyways, you got to think of it this way. Like each time there's a, a peak, that's because the demand is up. That means people are buying. When you buy, the price goes up because people now have to bid at a higher price to, to buy the same coin. So like essentially the more buyers there are, the more the price goes up. So anyways, when, whenever there's a peak, that means the demand. So when the peaks are decreasing, when we're in a downtrend, that means the demand is just decreasing over time. And when the supply is, I mean, when the bottoms are decreasing, that means the supply is increasing. Like more people are putting their crypto to sell. But when we have a wedge, meaning that means the demand is decreasing faster than the supply is increasing if that makes sense it makes any sense so that's why there's eventually a point where they join they meet and to put it in very simple language or simple terms with each of these general declines which i will denote with an arrow i'll actually use the brush and i'll make it red so you see, that's one decline. That's that's one wave down. But if we go to the next one, it's a little bit shorter. And hold on, let me try to move move this around. And what we see is that with each subsequent decline in a in a wedge, the 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 decrease or the fall in price is getting less and less over time. So this is something I'll make a lesson about. But okay, you see this, this decline is very big. This decline is getting less. This decline is getting less and so on and so forth. So what we see is that the declines are getting less and less. So there's a point where they stop, you know, with, with these types of trends. And there's less like downside as time goes on through the wedge, eventually it gets to a point where when they meet, the price must, you know, change direction or is likely to change direction. Unless the chart is very weak and the asset, you know, is failing and like the demand goes away completely. That's where you see a break of structure. 
I don't feel like we're going to see a break of structure at this current point in time. Though I feel like later on in September, especially in mid-September, around the full moon, with what we saw with Bitcoin, is that the cryptos may experience a decline. Because overall, we are still in a bearish um, cycle, especially if we go into a bigger time frame. We are still in a decline. This is the daily chart. And ever since March, we've just been on a decline. Anyway. Let's make this less bold. So anyway, we see wedges. We see one happened right here with Bitcoin. And this is a perfect example. The first incline is very big. And this is kind of, that was kind of like a large arrow right there. So I'm going to make it smaller. First incline was very big. The next one was smaller. The next one was even smaller and weaker until eventually there's no more growth and it turned around. You see, that's how these wedges work or that's the logic behind them, I should say. Um, and let me get rid of this uh, drawing tool. But anyway, what I'm projecting though um, is that between now, the beginning of September, and um, mid-September, the full moon, we might see some volatility. We might see a break up to the outside, upside because that's what it looks like to many traders right now and to, to many content creators. They believe we might have a reversal. Some of, us, some of them believe that we're bearish, but uh, you know, many believe we are due for a... Um, a relief rally which would make sense given uh given that we're kind of making this downwards wedge now and we can't we've broken out of it um so we might receive one more relief rally within the next 10 days that's my prediction i actually it's not my prediction like i don't necessarily know if that's going to happen um but could it happen yeah like it can technically due to this downwards wedge that we just broke out of, meaning now we can expect an upwards reversal. But what I do expect is that September overall is going to be a bearish and restrictive month for Bitcoin, for the price of Bitcoin. And my next technical target would be this 236 level, which is 19,100. If we break that, we're going to retest the bottoms from June. Or somewhere like in 18k to 17,000. But like my next target for the end of September or maybe early October, as long as, long as this Bitcoin lunar return is in, is you know downwards and the next support is like 19,000. Um, so, anyway, with Ethereum, which we have all these drawings, which I'm gonna clear very quickly if possible we also see that we have a downwards wedge that we're breaking out of at this time and uh, hopefully I can remove all these drawings before I keep going and I'll explain what I believe will happen next or what, what we're due for So we kind of broke out of this wedge, uh, this downwards, this downwards wedge that we see. Um, I'm also going to remove this Fibonacci retracement tool. We see that we balanced on the outside of this trend line. So, I mean, perhaps we could move up one more time, like I'm saying. That's a possibility. Um, but... Overall, though, with this, there's another um, wedge forming, which I'll have to pull up real quick. Or, you know, make it more clear. It's like this, and it's, I think, I believe it's in the four hour chart. And we technically like broke out of it already, which is kind of a, 
a bear sign, but you know, um, essentially, if there is a relief rally, we it, it it could very well happen within this wedge. But then keep in mind that this is a wedge as well. So it's like I'm saying we might have a relief rally. And notice how this is this is like the seventh of September around here. You see, as the wedge gets tighter, so that would make sense into the eleventh that we decrease. Um, but overall, my current um, actions right now are like preparing to sell. You know, especially if we have another relief rally, I feel like 1600 is a good sell level at this time, a good level to short the market. Um, I've already sold all my Ethereum and right now I'm just trading with leverage. So with that being said, um that is going to wrap it up for this update next we're going to talk about v um ethereum's venus return which it, it's going to have on september 5th and i'm going to make a short little podcast about that and what we can expect uh financially in terms of ethereum's astrology for the next year because venus is the planet of wealth and finance and the venus return for bitcoin is what we used to make a prediction that instead of bouncing from the $45,000 level, this $44,000 $40, level, wherever we were in April, we predicted based on the South Node being on Bitcoin's Venus return and a bunch of other things that it had to return to a level of previous support or like a previous price level because the South Node is all about the past. So that was my prediction. Um, it was kind of vague because, again, I don't have, you know, ability to see the exact price that is that is going to go to. But what we see is that at the moment I made that prediction, it was, you know, around April. And at this time, we believed that we could literally, you know, bounce back and go higher. Like many people believed that, including myself, I believed uh, in some way that we were going to go higher. But once I saw the Venus retu return chart of Bitcoin, which would, had a malefic on the ascendant and it was the forecast for the next year, I could see that like my main prediction was that it was going to return to a previous level of price. So that means just decrease. And literally over the next few months until June, it decreased and touched exactly... 17,500 about which is the levels of the previous all-time highs of bitcoin look at that well 19,000 is the previous all-time high but 17,500 is about at this peak right here so bitcoin literally returned to a previous level of price as we predicted with the venus return so we're going to do the same thing with Ethereum's Venus return and see what it's saying about Ethereum. Um, so stay tuned for that. And with that being said, I appreciate the support and you guys tuning in here on Patreon and watching. Um, I hope this was insightful. And I'll talk to you guys sometime soon in another post. Peace.